Many of the Camp Lindy scientists deny that chimps were used to make the polio vaccine. But Pierre Dupang is not so sure. He was in charge of laboratory testing at the time. C'était évident que le chef avait été intervenu dans la, dans la composition du vaccin de polio. Arrivé à quel stade, à quel niveau, moi je n'en sais rien. Je ne vois pas pourquoi on aurait fait, on aurait fait tant, tant d'histoires que ça avec les, 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 les chimpanzés. Si ça n'avait pas été pour s'en servir pour, la, pour avoir un, un but scientifique, en fait. Mais c'était avant tout un but scientifique pour lequel on les employait. Non, moi, j'ai plus rien à dire. J'ai parlé assez comme ça. J'ai parlé de toi-même. Two months after our meeting, Edward Hooper saw Dupang, and during this recorded conversation, he says a bit more. Stop making the, the culture. The, the culture was sterile. And I put the, I put the, the, the culture sterile. I was sterile to Anita. I don't know. To do what I don't know. Let me, let me ask you one last thing, Pierre, before I go. Um, how many times, then, would you say that you were making the sterile tissue culture from chips for Austria. A long time. Right. Dupang sheds light on the true situation at the time, and it makes sense that the polio vaccine would have been made locally for the vaccination campaigns in Africa. And what I discovered was that routinely all the people who were making oral polio vaccine used one particular method. They didn't send gallons of their vaccine overseas. That would have been logistically a very, very difficult process. They sent a small amount. They sent typically one flask of maybe 100 cc of vaccine. And each of those polio vaccine makers had another laboratory the laboratory near to where the vaccination was taking place, grow the vaccine up in locally available tissue culture. So Albert Sabin sent his vaccine to places like Hungary and the Soviet Union in 1957, and it was grown up locally in laboratories in Budapest, in Moscow, in Leningrad, and so forth. From Paris, Pierre Lapine from the Pasteur Institute, he sent his vaccines out to places such as Brazzaville in um, Congo Brazzaville. It was then in French Equatorial Africa. And there again, apparently, they grew up the vaccine virus in the locally available tissue culture. There, the commonest monkey was Cercipithecus nictitans. So basically, Although there was great control being exerted about how they developed the vaccine itself, how they attenuated the vaccine, they then grew it up in what was effectively locally available tissue. Now, they did their best, I'm sure, to make sure that monkeys, primates were used which were healthy, which didn't appear to be sick, but there was no final check made as to the material that was being fed to human beings. It was assumed that this stuff the, 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 the cells from the locally available primate was going to be safe. This contradicts Paul Osterith's testimony before the Royal Society, where he insisted that the polio vaccine could never have been prepared in Stanleyville. But in one of the lab's rare remaining official documents, we found 250,000 doses made for 250,000 people. The <laughs> Yango, 
between 1956 and 1960, more than one million people were ordered to receive Kaprowski's CHAT vaccine. When this was revealed, the World Health Organization immediately condemned these experiments. It would be absolutely unfair if responsibility for this, this sequence of events, for the making of the vaccine in chimpanzee cells, was to fall solely on the shoulders of Paul Osterith. He was the corporal or sergeant, but we must look for the generals here. His boss, Julien Courtois, the head of the medical laboratory in Stanleyville, clearly approved this course of action. There's no doubt about that. And just a few months before he began making the vaccine in chimp cells, Osterith was being trained in tissue culture techniques at the Wistar Institute at the specific request of Hilary Kaprowski. The person with overall responsibility for this sequence of events, without a doubt, is Dr. Kaprowski. Without his approval, without his direction, this sequence of events would not have taken place. I have no knowledge about it. I don't think the Belgians have knowledge about it. You should take his evidence with a grain of salt. I mean, is it, is it possible that, that, that this was done without you knowing, that chimps and Z kidneys were used without you knowing about it? No. There was no possibility to do something like that. From our trip to the Congo, we learned that the Lindy chimps and the Stanleyville Laboratory facilitated the local production of the CHAT vaccine. But does that resolve the question of where AIDS originated? The impossibility of testing or gaining access to the Congo samples, if they still exist, will always cast a shadow upon the answer. For the moment, in the scientific community, the polio vaccine theory is dead. But the extraordinary convergence of Kaprowski's polio vaccination campaigns with the epicenter of AIDS might encourage them to investigate Edward Hooper's theory more closely. At the very least, Questions are being raised about using monkey organs to make polio vaccines. We should have stopped using monkey kidney tissues, I think, for virus production in 1960. And we've continued to do so. The drug companies are the ones who really determine this. They have developed facilities, they develop processes that would cost them a lot of money if they had to do it a different way. The thing that makes me physically angry is the fact that we now have the genetic ability to make synthetic polio vaccine from recombinant proteins, and we are not doing it. That it, we continue to take ground-up monkey parts and inject them into children. <laughs> 